Hi, I'm going to do a tutorial on an environment painting. And I'm going to start, I've got an action tab over here. I'm just going to make a new canvas. And if you were curious, uh, here's the canvas size. I'm doing, we'll go into inches here. And it's 18 by 9 at 300 dpi. And in my uh, action, I have it automatically create a background and then lock that background and then make a new layer for the lines. I'm going to start drawing a foreground element and then another background element. And I'm going to have a line across here to show where the kind of give a hint of the perspective. It's also going to lead the eye to the uh, primary element over here, which I haven't actually decided what that is yet. I could have a large rock shooting into the ground or something. I want to have it kind of at this angle though. So everything's kind of swooping this way has a nice feel to it. Okay, so I'm going to have it shoot down. I mean, it's like a some sort of, I'm not sure what that shape would even be. It's some sort of shape. I'm just going to rough that out really quick and then figure out maybe it has angles shooting down like this. And I want to put a pattern on it right here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change perspective on this a little bit so it's a little more interesting so now the angle is going to shoot like that and then the circle pattern will be over here on the side so it's not quite so flat and let's pull down some objects these are going to be energy lines shooting into the ground or into the throughout the object basically i'm going to cut this center out really quick if you're curious i'm using a uh, cintiq to draw this Normally I do all my painting on an Intuos, but I tend to do drawing either on paper or on my Cintiq to get that nice one-to-one -one hand eye coordination. Now I'm just breaking up the edges a bit, the background. Same over here. Maybe I'm going to have this continue up and then over and out. Kind of this patterning. Keep going up. And now I'm actually going to break this object. So I'm just going to come through here, make a selection using L, getting a select tool, pull it over a little bit and tilt it and then deselect it with control D. And now I'm just going to kind of draw like a little bit of depth to it. And then here's where it breaks through on this side. Sort of just try to make this break look a little more interesting. Maybe we'll have some floating debris right between it. Break off this little bit of the corner here. And this is all just kind of an exploratory sketch. I don't really have a specific drawing in mind right now. I have some general ideas, but nothing too specific. I'm just kind of exploring the uh, the space. It's kind of interesting though. We're gonna have like this impact zone here, and then perspective. Just do some more of these Z's kind of shooting off. I guess they're not really Z's, but sort of V's. They're like zigzag shooting off in every direction. And then I'm going to have a little bit of a foreground element here. Maybe a walking surface. We'll add some stones you can walk on. This will give a little bit of a scale reference. You can do scale reference without having a person in there. If you want, you could put a person in there too. Could put like a little doop, a little stick man, pretty infamous. A lot of concept art drawings. I'm just gonna throw down some stones, stone walkway. That's kind of my equivalent to a stick man. It's having stairs or something like that. You have something that gives a good reference for scale. I'm just drawing in some grass. This kind of exploring where the grass line might be. So I'm thinking this area with all the would be dirt. And then along these areas, this is kind of the grass line. And then maybe I'll have some areas where there's erosions coming down. So maybe the grass doesn't grow completely up here. And it's gonna give a little bit of variation in my flora. Maybe Sort of some kind of bush growing up here. 
Let's draw a few circles for some leaves. And maybe some other shoots kind of growing up here. Other stuff there. Kind of focusing on this corner a little too much, but I should jump back into the background, mid-ground. Maybe I'll have some mountains back here, or at least hills and plains. Kind of exploring the shapes. I was almost going to draw a line right here, but you'll see that's kind of creating a strange tangent. So I'm going to put a little bit lower. I want to avoid tangents where possible. Break that up with maybe, maybe this is like a tree line or something back there. Looks a little too much like a pyramid. So I'm going to break that through and just change the shape a little bit and give it more organic shape, less of a triangle. Okay, I'm going to break off just a bit of this under area and then I have it like it's dropped down onto the ground below. And I'm thinking of this as like a, some sort of impact zone. So I want to explore different ways of doing that. Maybe this impact is like it landed almost. So we've got, doesn't make like a giant crater. We have this magic running through. And then I'm going to have magic running through off of that. Smaller elements shooting out. And then here's sort of the, the grass line. Maybe I'll have over here back into the sort of foreground area. I'll put some trees. Some pine trees. Pretty pretty keen on drawing pine trees. They're so so quick and easy to draw. Need to add some other trees in here sometime. We'll do some kind of Kelvin and Hobby Hob Kelvin and Hob style trees here. Just kind of underbrush and whatnot. So this is sort of a foreground, sort of a midground element, kind of merging these two planes. I'm gonna do a group of three to four trees. I have one kind of like a lone tree. The Lone Ranger tree off on the side. There we go. I'm going to separate this a little bit so it doesn't ruin my scale too much. And have a stone come up here and then shoot some grass for our super foreground element. Right there. Now I'm going to start incorporating some of these trees into the background and midground. And I referenced uh, atomic bomb going off for this. I have it up on my reference screen, and just kind of the all these trees just knocked down by that sheer impact of the struct of the bomb. A scary amount of force, and just to kind of push the point that these are trees still, I'm gonna flesh out one or two of them just a little bit more. Great watch for that tangent. And then I'm gonna have them up here. Uh, just the, the point of the tree, kind of breaking the, the plane here. And then maybe just some trees without any needles or leaves or anything. Maybe a regular tree thrown in the mix too. Branches. Just really scribbly stuff. That looks a little strange. I'm gonna get rid of that that one there. I think I'm okay with this though. I'm trying to get these trees to look like they are knocked back from all directions, not just all going one way. Now I'm gonna add some some clouds, maybe like the atmosphere is shooting down through the atmosphere, or the object shot throughout down through the atmosphere. Kind of, this is just like 
another strong focal point. And I'm going to choose the base of the clouds to be kind of around here. Kind of give a hint of perspective there. And then some smaller ones back, way back there. And then overlay them. And you'll see even with the clouds, I'm kind of doing this small, medium, large grouping. Kind of break it up a bit. Because if I just did the same size like that, it's going to look strange. Have some clouds overlaying back behind here. I'm going to give a little more texture to this object, just kind of some hints of little divots and maybe some cracks along these shapes. Little cuts out on the bottom here, like we talked earlier about the uh, objects falling off of this. I want this line to unify with that one. And then I'll kind of cut it in there a little bit so it looks like it's going into the ground. Same with this, just kind of break off some areas so it looks like you can see it kind of cutting into there. Maybe there's other offshoots shooting off of it. Yeah, I'm just kind of drawing zigzags, kind of following the plane of the ground, and then going back and then adding just some lines to hint at depth there. It was a little too straight, too organic, or too inorganic. There we go. Add some more trees, maybe some hints of trees that are unaffected back here. And I'm using the term trees pretty loosely. You can see I'm really just scribbling in some pointy objects. But that's enough for your sketch. I mean, if you can get your idea across without really focusing too much on all the tiny details and just really getting your idea across. Sometimes, as long as you understand what's going on, it's enough to take it to the next level. And that's actually how I do a lot of my concepts I have, for personal work at least. I have a lot of really vague stuff that I understand what it is. But if I'm working with a client, I want to make sure and actually flesh stuff out enough so that they know what's going on, so they can choose between the different options I've sent them. I'm going to add a few more smaller details up here on this main object. Kind of clean some stuff up a bit. Break that up a bit. This looks a little weird. I'm actually gonna, that sticking out looks strange to me, so I'm gonna cut it in so it looks like it notches in a bit. Maybe just a hint of that here. Like it's broken right on the notch. And that circular shape. Okay. Yeah, it's coming along pretty good. This is pretty much to the level I would take most of my sketches. I'm not gonna put too much time into the sketching process. You want to make sure the composition and everything's correct, but you don't want to go overboard with it. Now I'm just darkening this front area and adding some different growth, different flora. I'm just making sure it's a clear separation because I have, this is a pretty, pretty detailed sketch. There's a lot of, a lot of line work going on in the background. I'm still not happy with these foreground elements. Maybe I'll just get rid of them and have a few trees kind of laying out flat here. And then draw just a little bit of hint of needles or something shooting off of them. Yeah, I think that works a little bit better. Like erase some of these older lines that I had here. And then maybe just go back over just a little darker just to define this primary object. Getting lost a little bit. Just so it's a quick read for me if I'm once I'm taking something like this to the next level. You would you know, you would use uh when you go into the painting you would use uh 
atmospheric effects and contrast and things like that to do this same thing instead of just using a darker outline. Okay, uh, there we go. That's uh, that's my sketch for the day and tutorial. Hopefully it helped. Uh, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, just uh, comment. Leave a comment what you'd like maybe like to see as far as an environment. You can suggest some ideas and maybe I'll draw them. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.